back <laughs> for another different mug talk. Uh, I have obviously brought back a fan favorite, a uh, friend of mine, Tiffany. Welcome. How you doing, lady? I'm doing good. How you doing? Wonderful. I'm. Uh, we're back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think again, like I said, I think you might be my co-host. You might not know it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I ain't doing nothing but sitting up in this room all day. You know, Zoom, Zoom this, Zoom that. So that's you can catch me in my office. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love your background. Uh, it looks very familiar. <laughs> it, it should look familiar. I think you took the picture. <laughs> 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 yes, one of our mini hikes. Well, yeah. I think actually our only hike we took <laughs> out at uh, was that uh, Gumbert Canyon. Yeah, it is. Yeah, Gumbert Canyon. Yeah, I don't remember the name of this trail, but it, but we didn't quite make it to the. Um, it was something we wanted to see. What was it? It was dinosaur tracks. Dinosaur yeah. tracks. That's what it was. Yeah, yeah. One, the sun was going down, and I don't think we're built for uh, after dark ex adventures. <laughs> No, we, we didn't have the equipment for that. I mean, I'd like to bring like a pistol, um, uh, a flashlight, you know, maybe some snacks, but we didn't have that on us. So, and then Mary Jo's knee, you know. Yes. Was it her knee or her ankle? I think it was her, her ankles. Her ankle. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah so it, was, it was telling her it was time to turn around. So. I, well, I think we made it to like five miles. I think we're good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. It was we're pretty good. far. Yeah. That was after we walked in circles for the first two. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot about that part. Yeah, the, the land that part that didn't quite work out. Right, right. Yeah. Had we not have gotten the old circle loop de loop, yes. we probably would have saw the dinosaur tracks. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, guys, this is a uh, highly informal. Um, yet again, we are, are back. So, here's the format. Uh, we will be talking, of course, on a topic that has recently occurred. Uh, with me and Tiffany as your uh, your hosts uh, with the most. Uh, for, but first, we like to, of course, talk about our mugs. It wouldn't be different mug talk, and this wouldn't be coffee house style talking without coffee and a mug. Uh, so I will, of course, let my guest go first and present her mug and if there's meaning and other things behind it. Uh, and then if you want to go buy that particular mug, we'll find a way to get you the link. Uh, or if it's special and custom made, good luck. So Tiffany, take it away. Tell us about your mug today. All right. So I mean, mine's not really, um, you know, that special or whatever. It came in kind of like a set and I bought it at, at home. I'm not sure how many people got at home. Uh, the first time I've ever heard of at home was here in San Antonio. But um, it's like this huge, like, store that has a whole bunch of patio furniture, dishes, you know, just a bunch of stuff, huge warehouse. And um, the scent, it has like, there was like five different mugs and they all have like a different saying on it. And this one, I don't know if you can uh, see it. You can't uh, I think, see it? No, I think the background. Oh, there you go, it's right there. There you go. Over my decaffeinated body. So I think it's fitting. Uh, they all have like a, you know, a different saying on it. So they're pretty funny. So, I mean, you know, the, the type of stuff that you would say before you had caffeine in your body. So, <laughs> but yeah, but that's it. That's nothing special. I just picked up a random one today. Every mug is special in its own way. All right. So if you want to, over my decaffeinated body, uh, head over to At Home, if you're in San Antonio and anywhere else, uh, and find a mug that has a whole bunch of writing on it. Something <laughs> glittery. Uh, <laughs> my mug holds special meaning because to Tiffany, it should have some meaning to me. Uh, it was last year, July 1st. Uh, we went uh, camping <laughs> together and these were the cups I bought from Walmart, the Ozark Trails. So there's nothing really special about the mug itself other than the memory it holds. Uh, we uh, went out to Gardner State Park and uh, hiked up old Baldy. Uh, so this was the mugs we were using for coffee uh, the morning after. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that trail was treacherous. Uh, yeah, the, the, uh, I'm just saying, we almost didn't make it. Uh, there were some, <laughs> maybe some rock slides. There, there was a whole bunch of stuff that we were like, maybe we should be doing this. Yeah, uh, maybe we, we're almost there. Yeah, we should probably turn around. <laughs> yeah, yes. it was a good hike though. That was yes. a good, good so, camping experience. I, right, but next time we'll get the whole the whole kitten caboodle with the. Uh, bathroom i think the bathroom was the situation 
Uh, yeah, it. you know, next time I'm going to probably bring one of those pop-up shower tent things. <laughs> probably going to bring that because that bathroom that was out there. That, disgusting. That, oh, man, it was, uh, I just felt even more dirtier after the shower. Just put it that way. That's why yeah. I didn't take a shower. That's why I waited till I got home. I took my chances. I had baby wipes. I thought y'all was doing too. Y'all was doing too much. I was like, "Look, I got these baby wipes. I'ma feel feel wipe it up. I'm good." Yeah. It was one of those situations where the juice wasn't worth the squeeze. <laughs> it wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't at all. Yeah. Uh, yes, guys. So this this particular situation, we love where we were. Garter State Park is beautiful. Uh, the Furios River is that what it is? That a river? Yeah. Or, uh, the river is fantastic and beautiful. The issue was that was like a camping weekend right before the Fourth of July and everybody and literally their grandmother were out there camping and toilets weren't flushing uh there was i don't know if there's any hot water because i didn't take a shower but i was hearing that there was no hot waters yeah just just bring a pop-up tent bring your pop-up yeah. showers uh bring your own things if you can uh but it was fun so yeah. that yeah. was my that was my mug uh i'm still drinking that blend roast uh for the three sisters now that i, I have it made so three sisters uh, and then, of course, I'm product placing the shirt. Uh, my homegirl, uh, they have her daughter. She just graduated from high school, and she's an entrepreneur. And she's selling these very cool shirts uh, that are all about um, changing mentality. The, they, they got very uh, good messages on them. So this is the one I've been repping. Uh, so we'll, I'll post a link. Uh, head over to IG. Uh, it's vert, vertical, but it's got like a V period and then vertical. So I will post it. I uh, love these shirts. These are actually comfortable. So I'm on my third wash. So it's actually okay. got a, it's a 50-50 cotton polyester blend. So uh -huh. bam. So yeah, mm -hmm. vertical product placement all over the place. Like to just do this. So uh, head over, say something, say hi on uh, I Instagram and um, yeah, make some purchases. I, I love uh, black owned businesses and even more than that young black entrepreneurs. So at, for an 18 year old to come out and roll out her own line of clothing, <clears throat> got to get props. Mm -hmm. So, and yeah, so that, that is the introduction guys. We are going to roll into this topic, which today we are talking uh, the N word. We are talking the N word. Um, this should be interesting. <laughs> Our topic today, yes, the N word. So uh, we'll wait for it to come back. Do, 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 do. I don't remember. Okay. okay. That's my, all right. Three. I'm not, oh, I can't. Three, two, <laughs> one. All right. We are back. Guys, today's topic is the lovely and wonderful provocative n-word because I refuse to say it and that's just something that I will not do uh, but I'm going to introduce this topic uh, the best way I can um, so 2020 has been fun for the n-word <laughs> if there's ever a fun year to have the n-word being said uh, in January um, we had a Lakers uh, MSNBC uh, anchor basically say the word nakers <laughs> She's uh, supposed to be saying Lakers and oh, what was the other one? Oh, uh, the I'm trying to I'm trying to remember what the Nuggets. Was. No, it was the Knicks. So oh, the Knicks. the Knicks. So this was like right around the time there, uh, Kobe um, ba was basically killed in that plane crash, uh, and this correspondent was talking about the Knicks and Lakers game and basically tweeted, "Nakers, right?" Uh, so this is this is January. This is. Like the first one where you're like, ah, did she? Did this correspondent mean to put this? This right. was probably the one where the, it kind of toes the line. We start talking racial terms. I think people were read, really reading into it, uh, but it, that one was interesting. Uh, we get to uh, what was it? Uh, did, some, she tweet? She tweeted that? I think or this she, one, said, she said. I it. Think, yeah, so this she one, said. Yeah, she said. This one was stuttered. Said. Yes. She stuttered. Yes. This is the one she said she stuttered uh, live on air. <laughs> <laughs> Nakers. No, the one that was tweeted, uh, this one was by uh, Charlotte Hornets co correspondent, uh, broadcaster, uh, basically talking about the, uh, instead of putting nuggets, he put a, <laughs> I'm not sure how you make an accident of this one, but uh, this one was the full out word. Uh, <laughs> With the, the N and the I and the two G's and, and an ER. Yeah, was there like an autocorrect? 
none that I've ever been a part of, but yeah. <laughs> this one was another one where we'd get a, a correspondent saying, oh, I didn't mean to do it. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, okay, so okay. basically, yeah, basically it was a mistype. Just errors, errors abound. All right, okay, cool. Um, then <laughs> we, and then not sports related, but of interest as we come to, uh, I think August 18th, we get a, a Michigan uh, official using the N-word uh, when he was asked why he wasn't wearing a mask. Um, and basically said, I don't care. I don't care. Racial slur, racial slur, racial slur. If you're mad, like it's, it, 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 I don't know. The, the, ter the word for this one was, um, the official said, uh, quote unquote, this whole thing is because of them injures <laughs> down in Detroit. So this is in Michigan. This is a county official saying this uh, when asked. <sighs> yes, go 2020. Now on the lighter side of note, uh, if you weren't keeping up with the, I think it was what, a 12 year old uh, that was like making, making bank off of his, another young entrepreneur, <laughs> making bank off of his classmates being able to say the N word, they just had to pay him. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know if you've heard of that one. Uh, no, I hadn't heard that one. <laughs> yeah, so it was a, uh, a black student uh, that was making money off of his white peers. Uh, but yeah, he was, he was making cash, uh, making N-word passes. So th <laughs> <laughs> this is, again, this is a very interesting topic. This is 2020. So this is like in July when this, this kind of the story broke that this kid was making uh, money. <laughs> this young 11 year old was making money off of his peers. Uh, to get inward passes. <laughs> wow, I, I don't know whether to 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 like be um um surprised, like in a good way, like hey, get mad at boy, or be like, you know, what's wrong with you? <laughs> and that is part of the discussion we'll have because um, it it brings up some things, right? Like uh, yeah. okay, we're, now we're giving away inward passes. Um, Oops. <laughs> for, for those of those we're talking going back to the sports references. Um, in circa 2013, we had Charles Barkley that weighed in on this N-word uh, debate, uh, especially now that like sportscasters and some of the, all the people that are like officials within uh, say the NBA and NFL, 2013-2014 uh, mm -hmm. were kind of the, the time where they were trying to impose, right, fines on people mm -hmm. for using the N-word. Uh, and 2013, Charles Barkley, of course, said, I'm gonna use the N-word. Uh, with my black friends and my white friends, because guess what? They're my friends, and, and I can say this. Uh, 2014, uh, same thing, kind of situation where Doug Baldwin, uh, wide receiver for the Seattle Seahawks long term, uh, right? He's now retired, but he came out and said almost the same thing, whereas that uh, Roger Goodall at the time was saying he was wanting to fine uh, the players on the field for saying the N-word, and his whole mm -hmm. background was that uh, the only people saying it is African-Americans to other African-Americans, that's stupid. You're fine. You're basically fining black people for saying, <laughs> saying it to one another in a, in a, in not in a non-offensive way. Um, yeah. And these are from sports professionals and, and Hall of Fame greats. Uh, this, this N word, uh, it really brings the question of endearment or derogatory term. Uh, so this is what we're going to weigh in on today with that long background, because I think it needs to be kind of framed. Uh, we've got everything from getting in word passes to from African American people of color. It's a term of endearment between mm -hmm. us, <clears throat> your close knit friends. Uh, but there's also this uh, dichotomy that if a white person or someone that is other or outside of the the group says it, there's issues. There right. are major issues. So this is what we're weighing in on. So I will, of course, allow Tiffany. We'll we'll start with the uh, the the out group. The not the intergroup, but the Intra group, uh, for the out group, for white people, for, for Caucasians, for people that are not of the ethnic background to say the word. What are your thoughts <laughs> on just, just the general term, right? Like, so all those yeah. newscasters, most of them were white um, newscasters. They were not black in any means. So, yes. Tell me, tell me what you you think on that. Situation. So you want to know what I think about them saying the N word? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, no, honestly, they, no, no, absolutely not. <laughs> I mean, I don't say the, the N word myself, you know, I don't think it's, it has a place, you know, if we can't, if we can't, we can't move forward 
and get past the situations where if we're still using words like that, if we're still calling each other the N words, and and if we allow other people of other races to say that word, like, wh how far have we come? You know what I mean? Like with um, the whole miss uh, miss speaking about uh, the 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 nakers. I mean, <laughs> I honestly feel like that was probably a mistake. I feel like that that was a mistake. I don't think anybody in their right mind would um, commit career suicide like that. And <laughs> just, <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, I'm not, I don't really care how she felt. If she really felt like that, uh, you know, uh, about black people, I don't really think that she would have did that on purpose. You know, I, I do feel like that was, that was an accident. But to go as far as the, uh, what was it, the Michigan, uh, Michigan official? Oh, yes, yes, the yeah. Michigan, yes. Yeah, he was showing his true colors. He was showing, yeah, he was showing exactly who he was, a, a racist, okay? So he needed to be dealt with. <laughs> Take him out. He needed to be dealt with. That's who your, um, your, your officials are in that state. So I just, I, I, I really don't think there's any room for it. You know, I don't say it. Um, the people in my peer group don't say it, you know, of Black people, but we don't say it, you know, and my work environment, we don't say it. Nobody's allowed to say it. I, I really feel like it just shouldn't be, shouldn't be there. I wouldn't want nobody to call me that, which is one of the reasons why I don't say it, you know. And if, and I, it's, it's happened to me a couple times where I've been in a situation where I've had uh, white people slip up and say the word in front of me, you know, because sometimes, you know, I'm, I'm one of those easygoing people, you know, sometimes people forget that I'm black sometimes. It happens, I guess. <laughs> I don't know how, but it, it has happened. That is not an accident. <laughs> so I, I real, really feel some type of way about it. So I do not agree that uh, people outside of the black race say it. I mean, as well as us, I don't think we should be saying it either. I don't, know. I don't know if you agree or not, but. Uh, I agree. I agree. Uh, but I'm also of the same mentality, which is why this is our opinions on it. Um, mm -hmm. I'm just not a, a fan of the word, uh, let alone uh, when you start talking, as you say, career suicide, mm -hmm. uh, to even say it. Um, there, there is a, a history behind it, and we'll, I'll get into that part when we start talking uh, the intergroup saying the word, uh, that kind of that history behind it. Uh, but for the stories I kind of mentioned before, uh, the it's only after the fact where you're like, there's this outrage, right, that ha occurs that people were like, no, I didn't, uh, I didn't, I didn't mean to type that or, you know, sometimes in conversation, I've heard it like in a storytelling situation where uh -huh. someone is, I, again, I, to me, I, I just, even Mark Twain in his own prose, we would put quotes around the word, right? So mm -hmm. uh, me, when you start talking, um, any any outside race just not even if you were brought into the black neighborhood and you thought you were the next next black friend right with a different right, right. right like not okay not okay uh even worse when you start talking professional settings and i think that's where the 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 major difference is you're not among friends you are not twitter and uh all these other social media platforms are not your friend so why even put yourself in that situation <laughs> where yeah. Where someone can uh, have an opinion, right? So, like, I don't know. I don't know. People, you, uh, there's, there's a sensitivity. Um, I would, I would, I would really have to think about what I'm writing very carefully to include, uh, what do you call it? Uh, to include anything offensive in any way, because somebody's mm -hmm. gonna take a. Nowadays, we're in a world. 2020 has shown us we're in a world that is offensive by nature, right? Uh, right. And, it can, it can literally kill your very livelihood. It can, mm -hmm. I don't know. So, yeah, no, no. White people, others, anybody, doesn't matter. Don't say it. Don't say it. Don't do it. Because you're not ready. You're not ready. <laughs> okay. So now let's talk um, people of color and uh, intergroup. Uh, Tiffany, what are your thoughts on... Uh, Black people saying, you kind of already put it out there, uh, people of color, brown, other, we, we cool type situations. Uh, what are your thoughts on it? Yeah, I mean, 
you know, I know a lot of black people that do uh, say the N word and they use the term, you know, I mean, it, it's something, you know, you grow up with, you, you hearing a lot about it, but it's a word that I don't like to use. And I just don't think, um, like I said, I don't think we should be using the word. Nobody should be using the word. You know, how can we get past with the problems that we're having today with the, the racial violence and the discrimination if we're still using words like that, you know, I mean, I just don't, I don't, I just don't think we should, should do that. When you got that situation, like the kid that's um, um, getting or, or getting money from his white classmates <laughs> so they can have the opportunity to say the word, let's just not say the word at all. You know what I mean? Pass. Free pass. Free pass. Yeah, yeah. A free pass to say the N word. Like you can say the N word all you want to with, with a low rate of $20. <laughs> No, no, but I mean, if, if it's just me and you and you're my homie and we sitting on the street corner or we talking against each other, like, it's okay, because yeah. I could say it. I can, we could say it. It's okay. What, what is your issue? I, I can, I can even like even shorten and put an A on it. What, it's not the same word. It's, it's a term of endearment, Tiffany. So what are you, <laughs> you say? Yeah, it may. It may not be the same word, but it still it still holds the same weight. There's no, I mean, where did it come from? You know what I mean? Like it still came from a time of slavery, a time where black people were enslaved and, and we were told that we were less than human beings. That's where that word came from. And to call each other that, I think that just, that it just takes us back. I mean, it, it, I feel like it, we're just feeding into it. You know what I'm saying? I just don't think that we should be calling each other the N word, re regardless. No, you know? it's 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 a testament, actually, right, of mm -hmm. us changing the word from something that was derogatory to an endearing term, and that's the reason why white people or others can't say it because it is our means of. I'm of course bringing out the arguments that I've ran into when people have said it. Uh, <laughs> we've, we've, we've managed to change the connotation of the word. The, the only reason why white people or others cannot say is because that's ours. We, we've culturalized it to not be derogatory anymore. I don't know. Mm, they're saying it though. <laughs> it still has not stopped from people outside of the black race from saying it. You know what I'm saying? You can say I co-signed this. I I made a copyright on this word. You know what I'm saying? It still, it still does not take away from the fact that where that that word came from was a time of enslavement. You know what I mean? I just, I don't. I, why can't we make up another word? You know what I mean? Like I just don't understand like why we have to use that word to be a term of endearment. You, you, we're the only race that has a word like that that that, <laughs> that we use for a term of endearment. You know what I mean? Like I just. I, I mean, you don't see all these other races calling each other by their racial slurs. You know what I mean? I just don't. Uh, not that I'm comparing you to that, but I'm just saying that. I just think I don't. I don't think I don't think we should be using it. I just. I mean, you know, that's just my opinion. I really don't think we should be using. It. I just feel like. I just feel like it's almost giving in, you know, to what we were thought of back then you know and just to call each other that i don't i feel like we don't really get past um those moments back then if that makes any sense no. i don't know if that makes any sense no uh, it's something that we continue to bring up and socialize as socially acceptable so. i don't think it should be socially acceptable to say that you know i just and I mean, the fact of the matter is, it is right now. It is kind of socially acceptable, which I don't think it should be. I think we should be teaching our kids, you know, that it's not acceptable. You know, we should we should make that term in a way where it's not used. We shouldn't be using that because of it's in a, a term of endearment. We're going to take that word and we're going to say it, but we're going to say this white person can't say it. I win because these white people can't say it. That, to me, that doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. That's, I mean, that's a ridiculous battle, I think, that is not worth fighting. And it's my opinion.
No? And, <laughs> and I agree. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I will, it's just me. No, no matter if it's the N, the N or the A, E-R, the A on the N, uh, I don't feel any pride being able to say it or hear it in music. And it's okay when it's in music, right? Because it's, it's now a piece of art. Uh, mm. I'm not saying, and I'll, I'll be the first lady. Like, so I, I have said it when I was singing lyrics. Uh, but then I really thought about it. I was like, I know I can't get down with this. Like, my younger me, I, I didn't really think about what that word meant. Um, and so even thinking about it in our, in the culture context of music and other forms of art that we just kind of arbitrarily say it, like it's, uh, like it's just another, like the word the, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I, my, that's my major issue with it is that I, I do think about the, the history behind it, kind of like what you brought up uh, and uh, what it's actually done even between our, our intergroup uh, interactions, because then uh, if you don't like the word, then you're kind of in the out group now. Like, well, I mean, why you be like, you become bougie. It's like, I was like, I, there's so many even interracial factors that occur for those that are fighting against just getting the word out of our lexicon, uh, it's become so entrenched. And even as a term of endearment, uh, I even tell my family, I was like, please don't say it around me. I, what y'all do on your own time, that's cool. But it's just, it's just not a word that professionally, one, I would want to be allowed to use, just given my profession. And even two, uh, that I would want young adults, uh, even my young cousins and the babies, right? They're growing up around this type of language. And that's why I'm saying like, the cuss words and everything else that they're growing up with, but that this is, this is okay. They're going to pick this up and then they're going to start using it as well without yeah. actually knowing the history behind it. And then you're going to get to school and be like, Oh, I'm going to be angry again. We're, we're perpetuating the situation. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be angry at the white people and all the others for saying it, but because we do it, we, we cool. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh -uh. <laughs> so but to provide some, uh, Historical value, I mean, we know that the, the N-word in and of itself uh, is not, it's just another word, right? Um, but uh, we know that uh, before the connotation and what we, we brought America, as what I'll call it, the American colonialism brought to it in the 19th and 20th century. Uh, before then, Black was Black, right? So I've got Negro, I've got, you know, all kinds of Latin terms that to define a culturally dark-skinned individual, right? A black-skinned, mm -hmm. uh, dark-skinned individual. So uh, there are many variations. Um, I went to Wikipedia, because that's a very good source. No. <laughs> <laughs> Talk, talking about the history of the N-word, right? So historically speaking, yes, I, I would have been called Negro in Latin-speaking countries because that was, it, guess what it means? Black, go figure. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, there's other variations of that term to include the, the ER term, uh, to include the A, even the A on the end uh, for black people, uh, people of darker skin tones. Uh, but I think now, just in general, it's not just talking black. It, we, the American colonialism and what happened with slavery did put a big stamp on what it means, right? Um, mm -hmm. To, uh, I was saying even uh, Wikipedia is great for just getting some quick research, but talking about uh, at the onset of the 19th century, those early 1900s, the N-word was used as a term like, dude, hey, what's up? Like, it was like a, a hey, dude, kind of like what we use it for now. Um, but that was before you really started talking about slaves and how bad it was going into the civil rights movement, that 20th century like, so for that, what, 100, two, almost 200 some odd years or 100 some odd years of uh, usage of the term, uh, even uh, the NAACP denounced the A and ER terms for within group uh, because of the uh, polarizing effect that the word have, has by itself. So just, just eliminate, it, eliminate it from your lexicon totally. White, black, doesn't matter. It's just a term that uh, pop culture or otherwise just shouldn't be said, um, just given the history of uh, the fact that I went from an NGR to a colored girl, <laughs> right? And then you bring it back in the 1960s just to, you know, let me know my place. And that's, I kind of take that from knowing the history behind it. Uh, I don't like being called colored. Uh, I know that connotation. It's, I, again, it, it's all about how you say it. We'll be like, oh, Tiffany, that little colored girl. Uh, okay. 
<laughs> yes. I've met quite a few people that still use that term and they don't think it's derogatory. Because other than black. Other than black, right? But yeah. it's, it's also about how things are said. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> and most think, of the time it's it's not a it's not a white person that says it. It's it's you know, either Asian or, or Hispanic, you know, they'll use the word colored and um they don't think it's derogatory. But some of us do not like to be called colored <laughs> because of where it came from in the 60s. <laughs> well, and so I was like, I, my great grandmother before she passed, it was a term that they, she grew up with, right? So she would, uh -huh. she, would, she would say little color girl. And that's how they knew how to denote darker skinned people, black people. Uh -huh. So again, it's, this is, we start talking the lexicon and things that are kind of built into our system. I, 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 I don't know, like, I, 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 I just, I've been called it. It's I when it was my great grandmother. I just knew it was from a time like there was a time and place, and we're now in a new generation of people where colored isn't being used in the norm, right? Um, we rarely see the signs anymore over water fountains that say "coloreds only," right? Mm -hmm. uh, but the 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 words that we are are going to and probably will continue to see will be the NGR, right? The the G E R. Uh, terminology probably through tweets, uh, probably through social media, um, and the accidental tweet. Yeah, these <laughs> accidental tweets. But but again, it's it does come back to this dichotomy of when white people say it, it's a career suicide, but when black people do it on air or through prose or whatever else, it's okay. It's okay. Like it's not career suicide for you because you went through something. Um, there, there's that. Um, I, I don't know, I don't, I don't, that fairness, right? I'm not saying anybody should be saying it, uh, but there's that that unfair advantage where you're saying, oh, some black person said it, and so it's okay, even in the media, I, newscasters, and just being able to even say it as part of news. Um, I, I recently just watched, um, oh, was that MSNBC? Uh, where they were talking about this very thing where a newscaster could say it and if it was somebody of different race, they were like, well, it's different. You should be able to say it. I'm, I'm reporting the news. Mm -hmm. mm, this, this, yeah, this correspondent was like, no, no, you're actually normalizing that it's okay to say it. And even in the news, it's not okay. It's not okay. No, it's not. It's er not. Erase it from your, 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 your verbiage. <sighs> Race from the verbiage, because that's the very thing is you're propagating that 2020, thank you, you've done a lot, 2020, um, it's okay to say the N-word, and it's not. Um, and that, again, these are our opinions, uh, but I don't even, I don't think it expresses a positive image or even a, a negative image for it, right? It's just a word, but because of just the history behind words and what it actually means, I, I don't know. People people taking it very lightly. Um, and I, I don't know, I, I think it's open for debate as usual, right? Um, yeah, yeah, I, I just don't think it belongs in the media at all. I don't think they should be talking about it. I mean, I should be used as, as curse words, you know, are they over there, you know, cursing up a storm while they're reporting the news? I mean, I, I really think it should be treated like a curse word. You just don't say it, you know, it's, it's, it doesn't belong in a professional setting at all, you know? For them to try to justify well you know i'm reporting the news you know but i mean i, I don't see you saying you know bitches and hoes on there either right <laughs> i mean i'm just saying <laughs> we would we would bleep that out right it would be bleeped out and then yes. for a lot of them that just report it and and you have them on the air and it's not bleeped out that's crazy <laughs> i don't know be well, and it's not a word that's bleeped out. That's the thing. Yeah. Saying the N-word yeah. on air is not a bleeped out because it's not an expletive. Um, okay. And that is an interesting mark on the word. Oh. So I will leave this here. Uh, we're going we're going to drop the hammer on that one. Those are our thoughts. I would love to know everybody else's thoughts on this N-word debate, intergroup, outgroup, intragroup, whatever other uh, terminologies. What are your thoughts on the N-word uh, use in social media, normal language, uh, we could we could go on all day uh, talking about this. There, there's a lot of new. It's a very nuanced uh, discussion, so we're going to keep it as high level as we can on this format. But uh, let's know your thoughts. Um, we'll come in back with what I'm calling the lightning round, uh, and this is where I will actually tell Tiffany what this lightning round is, so she has no idea. Uh, <laughs> oh man, I hope I'm ready. 
So the topic we are talking uh, is Jessica, Jessica Krug. And if you don't know who that is, uh, <laughs> Jessica Krug just came out, I want to say this past week, uh, she wrote a, a prose in medium.com uh, stating how uh, she had basically pulled a Rachel Joselle <laughs> on us. Uh, she is, she came out, she's been pretending like she's Afro-Latina uh, for her whole career as an ac in academia. So she's a professor, associate professor, uh, and basically wrote a, this is, this is, this is me. I am not black and I've been, I, I've been pretending that I'm black. So we'll take a moment. <laughs> I'll, I'll let Tiffany uh, look at her face. He's like, what? I don't know if you read it, but this is going to be our five minute lightning round to close it out. Uh, we are talking Jessica Krug. <laughs> Oh, and, hey. so and her this is why I said five minute lightning round. I know you got some thoughts. Um, <laughs> I'm, this is the first time I heard this. I know. That's like, <laughs> so, <laughs> you sound amazed. You're like, what? Like, what? Who do that? And who? Uh. So, again, um, I'll, it's, this is going to be a short one, short segment, the lightning round. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the, the new Rachel Do Dozel, or however you say her name, uh, Jessica. <laughs> Krug. Krug. Like, yes, let Krug. me know. If you need a little more time. This is an interesting yeah, topic. Yeah, okay. Crud. Krug. 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 I don't even know. I don't even know, <laughs> I don't even know if I'm saying her name right. Okay, guys, we are back. We are talking the lightning round. We're talking Jessica Krug. I'm probably saying her last name wrong. It's K R U G. She is being named the new Rachel Dozell. Um, she. <laughs> As I previously stated, she came out uh, with a with an article on Medium, m e d i u m dot com, uh, basically giving out the fact that she is scammed and has appropri appropriation of uh, Black and Latina culture for her whole life. Um, she came out and basically said, "Hey, I am a white Jewish woman that grew up in the suburbs of Kansas City, and this is my life." And it's a very, it's a very nice, nicely written piece. I, I read it. It's a, it, it, it seems very self deprecating. Uh, I'm gonna say that wrong. Uh, she seems very sincere in what she is writing, uh, and like legitimate. Like I, I understand that what I did was wrong, right? Um, so if you haven't read this article, I will try to find it and post it uh, in the links below. Uh, but the issue. Uh, the, the major issue and why she's now being called the new Rachel Dozell is because she's an associate professor. She's in academia and she's made a living uh, teaching Afro and Caribbean culture uh, to students. Uh, so there are some people that are just calling her straight, straight fraud. There is no, there is no, like, people even giving Rachel Zozell a benefit of the doubt. She, oh, Rachel Zozell's got black kids. She's married, she's married to the culture. She actually thinks she identifies as a black woman. This one, she, this lady came out and straight up said, no, I'm, I'm white. And I have profited <laughs> from my looks, right? She, I, I I'll, I'll show a picture um, saying that she kind of looks like she could be from a Afro-Latina culture. No, she um, doesn't which is in fact not the case. So we are talking, <laughs> we're talking Jessica, or as her alias would say, she's Jess La Bambera, um, which now the tweets have since then <laughs> been, de uh, been deleted uh, from that alias and it can no longer be found on Facebook. Uh, but she committed, some people say career suicide for herself by even coming out. Uh, but here's the autonomy. Um, after even reading it, I was like, oh, she, it was, it was a good, very well written uh, piece that she was talking about the cultural, cultural appropriation. But um, after further reading of other sites, uh, it was, it came out that people were actually starting to question her about her, uh, her awesome authenticity about her race uh, and things that she was speaking. So some of her own people in academia was about to about to let the cat out of the bag is what I've been reading about. So that she felt the need, right? She got ahead of it, right? I, yeah, I, that's she, how you do it. She owned the narrative. So, and then bam, she comes out with this. And some people are like, no, nah, legitimately, she, she is, she's gotten grants, she's gotten funding because she has legitimately came out and said that she is uh, of a specific culture. 
And so that's why some people are up in arms is that she is teaching our, our youth of the future. She didn't have to pretend to be Afro-Latina, Black at all, right? Teach the culture. Like there's nothing wrong with being a white woman <clears throat> teaching in the sense of academia, but now you're very, you, your name is under fire. You're very, your reputation, I can't, I can't trust you, right? Like this, so for a lot of people, it, it comes down to the fact of what her profession is and even worse, the fact that she was getting monetary funds for research and other, you know, other things um, from being this Afro-Latina characterization of a person she is not. So Tiffany, what are your thoughts <laughs> on uh, Miss Jess uh, Krug, Krug, I, again, I'm gonna mess her last name up, K-R-U-G, uh, and kind of what she had to say uh, <clears throat> about... <laughs> well, I have to say I hadn't heard the story. So, um, man, um, first hearing the story, I'm, I just want to say, I don't have all the facts, but she's a fraud. She is a fraud, okay? I mean, if she in fact accepted monetary funds because she said she was a, a, a black race or a Latino, um, she's a fraud. She is a fraud. I mean, there's no other way to put it. Um, and what sounds like to me, the only reason why she came out with that article was to, to get ahead of the narrative so she wouldn't look as bad. You know, I, I think anybody would have did that if they were trying to save face. I mean, look how long she's been doing this for years, pretending that she was a minority to, to get what, a money for grant? What, who knows at this point? I mean, I, like I said, I would have to do a little bit more digging, a little bit more reading into it, but she is a fraud, you know? She's over here trying to rake the benefits of being a minority, you know, using all these uh, reparations and money to, to, to further her career and, and I mean, you don't need to be a minority to teach the subject. You know what I mean? Like, the, she went out of her way for whatever reason to tell people that she is black or um, Hispanic. I mean, I'm I'm not sure. I think what was it a time frame? From what I briefly read, it was a time frame where she said she was a Hispanic, and then another time frame where she was black. Am I correct? Uh, it looks like she was. It was just like a. Uh kind of a combination where oh, Afro, like her, her, it's like Afro Latina right Afro -Latina. like yeah kind of that Afro Latina uh, mix yeah. uh, and I'm looking at some of these pictures and she really she looked like she could be maybe Hispanic but she don't really look like an Afro Latina to me she uh I mean I mean but if somebody tells you that that's what they are you know you tend to not question it you know why would you question it oh, okay she just you know uh, she just look a little bit lighter. Her hair looks a little bit straight. You know, it's possible, right? You know? Yes. But uh, I want to say she's a straight up fraud. And you know, the people that are comparing her to Rachel, I mean, she, she was a fraud too. I mean, if you come out and say, hey, I am black. I am a black woman. But you are a white woman or of other ethnicity, you're is a fraud. You're a fraud. You're a fake. You know what I mean? You know, is that is that to say that is that criminal, or maybe they just suffer from some some type of identity crisis? You know, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. We could further look that into look into it, but for the most part, she knew exactly what she was doing because she came out with that article. Yep. Okay, yeah, it may sound good. Yeah, of course it's gonna sound good because she's sorry. She's sorry she got caught. Okay. <laughs> Because had, had they not uh, uh, threatened to blow a whistle on her, she wouldn't have came out with that, that article. It's, no, no, that's how I feel. Okay. <laughs> For me, I, um, I have had a little more time to look into this one. So <laughs> um, <laughs> this will end up being an express of that topic uh, that I will be putting out 50 minutes or less about this topic, uh, but it delves deeper, right? So it's more than her, right? I, I do believe this story has more to it. Um, the university that she works is George Washington University. That's a they are opening investigation into the the claims, right? Um, especially since she's 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 a chair now in her in her uh, what do you call it uh, in her area of academic studies. So she's an associate professor. Uh, 
And some of these claims could be, again, egregious to her uh, very reputation as an academia, in academia as a, as a professor, as a teacher. Um, but beyond that, uh, it's not the first or last time we're going to hear of someone uh, wanting to be uh, <laughs> monetarily or otherwise be culturally Black. I, I think the, the culture is, it's just ripe for anybody to join in, right? Um, I, 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 I think I was telling someone, I was like, it's very hard for me to be my skin tone every day because there's automatic connotations that come with having that skin tone. But for people that can slip in and out, uh, it must be very nice because there are certain ways that people treat me uh, based on uh, my skin tone. So uh, it's not just her. Uh, I'm not going to even, she, she, yes, probably is a fraud. Uh, I, yes, I hope that I, again, I wasn't in on the whistleblowing or anything else, but uh, there's more to the story. This will, will, will dig deeper into what's going on here. Uh, but I also want to put the caveat that we've had African Americans, right, that are able to slip in and out of right. the cultural, right, the cultural boundaries uh, for being light skinned. And they have, we've had the ones in the past that have come out and saying, I have lived my life as a white woman or white male or whatever. Uh, and I'm in fact, DNA wise, black. Uh, so this is, I guess, a topic for you. Uh, if you want to join me on the espresso that uh, talking really quickly is, I mean, black people have done it. We just, we just like sensationalize these people, right? I say these people, uh, the white people that come out and it's usually a white woman. It's weird how this works. Uh, most of these stories are white women uh, that are pretending to be of uh, another race when they are not that race. Uh, but our African Americans are doing it. Um, okay, are they are they getting money for doing that? You know, are they getting grants because they're saying, "Hey, I'm a white person. Um, let me go ahead and give some uh, 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 cash in on some of these reparations." <laughs> no, no, it is totally different. So I, again, totally I don't, different. I don't think you know. And most black people who do do that, they don't say I'm white. Most of the time, they just let you assume that they are. They don't come around and say, hey, I'm white. Hey, I'm full white. I'm 100% white, just in case you, you're asking. You know, most of the time, it's like, oh, okay, you know, you walk around, you look white, so they're not going to say anything. They, they don't advertise that they're not black or or they're not white. You know what I mean? Most situations. Yes. I, I, I can think of an Oprah or a couple other uh, TV shows in the 90s where this was an actual topic, uh, but like this, this will be another different mug talk or something we can expand on later okay. because it, it literally is a an issue uh, when you start talking historically speaking, uh, yeah. where uh, slave masters sleeping with black, right? Like sleeping with uh, slaves, uh, female slaves, and then of course you give birth, and now you've got uh, the bastardized children, right? And but they can be passed as your own. So some of this start talking from a black or african-american standpoint is the fact that you were you were black or white passing is i guess the word that was the term that was using um and this is the same thing where I, again i don't know if this is something that's new to, to you know the 20th century uh to be black or brown passing um but it, I, I don't know if there is is there a real uh difference in what they're doing versus what what uh black people who could could be right could be white passing, have been doing it for years, right? In in this culture, I'm, and I'm saying strictly in the American culture, uh, I don't know if there's any real difference. Uh, you're making it, right? You're making it till you fake it. You're faking it till you make it, right? Yeah, faking <laughs> uh, it till you fake it till you make it. Fake it till you make it. So I think there's a big difference. All right, so me and me and Tiff. Okay, so this wouldn't be light around if we keep this up, but I think now me and Tiffany have a discussion point for another different mug talk because I feel like she feels some type of way. I do. I really so, do. So I'm going to let her have the time to actually research. Uh, this will be the first topic on the next different mug talk. Uh, but <laughs> I'm glad I sprung it on you. I'm glad I sprung it on you. I know she feels some type of way about this, but this is the second half. So uh, that is the end of the lightning round, Tiffany. I'm glad you two were, uh, <laughs> you, <laughs> you allowed me to just spring things on you, uh, being a good sport about it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, uh, hey, I'm ready. I stay ready. Yes, stay ready or get ready. Uh, <laughs> but again, uh, let you guys let us know your thoughts. 
thus far on this topic because it, there's a lot more to it than just the fact of uh, Jessica Krug, K-R-U-G, because I, I don't know if I'm saying correctly, uh, doing what she did. Um, Jessica Crud. With a D on the end. Yo, let, let me stop. Let me stop. Yeah, let me let me just throw it out there. Tiffany feels some type of way about this topic, so I'm gonna have to come back to it. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, that's the lighting round. We're talking uh, cultural appropriation. White women pretending to be black. What are your thoughts? All right, thanks guys. <laughs> Keep this on our list. All right. <laughs> All right. Let me close this out. We can be done, and then if you just want to talk, we can talk. <laughs> Got nothing else to do. All right, guys, we are back. We are eating this one. Um, we talked about the N-word. We talked about uh, Jessica Krug, K-R-U-G, not crud, uh, in our lightning <laughs> round. <laughs> uh, thank you for sticking with us through this uh, episode of Different Mug Talk. I want to thank Tiffany again for coming on. Uh, she's already been roped into a third episode. <laughs> Uh, talking about uh, this debate on uh, light skin, uh, light skin, dark skin slash cultural appropriation. Uh, it's going to be another interesting different mug talk. So Tiffany, thank you. <laughs> hey, thank you for having me. <laughs> yes. And as always, we're, we're here to have some fun, but I actually talk real things. Um, I wanted to have some meaning. So if I can, of course, fantasy football season is coming up. So I'll be the first to say I'll probably do a different mug talk on our season uh, because uh, it's important that I talk about football uh, when I get the chance, and Tiffany has no idea. So if she wants, <laughs> if you want to join in on these discussions, uh, I don't know if you're going to play fantasy football with us, but I'm yeah. so so grateful and happy that football is back next week. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. I I've been waiting so long. No preseason killed me. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, guys, look for our uh, topic on this different mug talk. As I said, I will be putting out another espresso that talking specifically about this situation with Jessica Krug. Uh, it's only going to be about 15 minutes. Uh, and then uh, I'm going to put out a special, a special espresso of that, uh, talking about the payroll deduction <laughs> that uh, President Trump has just put out. Uh, and, <laughs> and I say this is going to be a short win, and it's going to be an espresso of that because it's more an inform informational espresso of that, talking about yeah. uh, Kind of, right? I, I took to my own Facebook, I took to my own social media talking about uh, kind of being against it. So I kind of want to talk about it a little bit more. So that's what these rest of that's are for. Um, it does have implications for your 2020 uh, taxes. If you do not pay attention to the thin and small, extra small print uh, about what's happening if that money is taken out of, is not taken out of your check for the, the payroll tax. So that's a whole nother topic. Uh, look for it. It's coming out probably in the next week. Uh, this will be put out by Monday, Labor Day. Ooh, give you guys something to look at. Uh, okay. So uh, we're going to keep it up. I'm going to try to keep this content rolling. Uh, but again, as always, give us your ideas, anything you guys are seeing out there that would make a hefty <laughs> uh, talking point for us to hit on. Um, and we'll, we'll see if we can hit it out of the park. Maybe not. Even if we don't know about it, we'll talk about it. Cause that's what we do. Uh, so uh, <laughs> if you want to hit me up, hit me up on my Instagram. It is at Archon Storm. Uh, that is my Instagram. I'm putting the little thing here so that you can see it. Uh, if you would like to hit me up on Facebook at Different Mug Talk, uh, you can hit me up there. Uh, or you can hit me up on Twitter at EPB Storm. Uh, that is all my social media, uh, everything else. Uh, as always, guys, thank you, thank you, thank you. Sending peace, love, and positivity, and good vibes. <sighs> Another great day, uh, and I'm really hot because this coffee is just, it's like 100 degrees in here. I'm um, sweating. <laughs> uh, thanks, guys, and I will see you next time. Peace. <laughs>